Hi everyone and welcome back. What I want to show you today is how to reestablish some of your uh, darker greens right next to your roses. Uh, bring in a little bit more color that is deeper than what we have on the foliage back here. And I usually uh, start with sap green a little bit of violet pansy and a little bit of greenscape and I want this color real real light I want it uh, loose on your palette to where it has quite a bit of thinner in it because I want it really thin it's almost like a float with some color and when you come in to your painting here you can pull a little bit of that float right next to your rose. And then when you want to do a leaf, you're going to go on your chisel edge. You're going to pull on the leaf here. You're just like you're pulling a tulip leaf. Pull up. Go out a little further, like an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And then pull into the center. This is going to create... A real soft leaf it's not going to be real real thick and that's what I want right now is something really really soft and what I want you to do is to go around and create some of these leaves on your canvas here this one's going to be a little bit darker that center in then I don't have to worry about trying to cover it up. That's the reason I do them this way. Again it's an overstroke just like we did on the on the roses. Let me dip my brush in water and blot it. These leaves go in really fast. They're not hard to do. Just go you want the length of your leaf there's your one stroke. Go out a little bit and pull to the center. If you want, put your vein in. There we go. Dip your brush on each side. Come back and reestablish your, your vein. And if you want it a little deeper in color, just pick up more paint, touch and pull while it's still a little bit damp there. Reestablish the vein. Okay, pick up a little bit. And I'd like to add some of the rose color to the leaves. And I can do that too while it's wet. Tip those edges while it's wet. Because once it's dry, you almost have to go back and reestablish that again. Let's see, I need some. Reestablish it. Wipe your brush down if you have too much. Let's see, let me go into some water here. Blot it a little and just reestablish that leaf. There's the vein. Pull back out if you want to. And you can pull back in. It's a nice way to do leaves that aren't, you don't want, want them real, real, a lot of color on them. Just reestablish them first and then we can always, we can come back and add other color and if you're floating some color on, again, just pick up a little float color. Over in here, we would need to establish some darks. Walk that color out a little bit. But leave all these small highlights back here and real light color 
still in there. And you can just come back and reestablish them as you're going along. I actually have this recorded on the painting we're doing and something happened to my audio and it's like my video it recorded the background but it didn't record my voice that's so strange I don't I have no idea why it did that maybe somebody can tell me I'm not real good at this tech stuff I'm surprised I was able to do YouTube and it took me three days to realize I had opened up two channels instead of one so I would say I'm not real tech inclined here I used to be a lot better when they had AOL that's like 30 years ago but the technology is so advanced now. Oh my gosh. It, uh, make your brain hurt. Okay, here we go. Make that leaf come out a little bit more. This is the same stroke that we're doing on our, our petals, only we're using it for our leaves. So that, that is the leaf that I did on this set of roses. And there's several more that you can do. My goodness, Lana's uh, leaf study is, she does every kind of leaf you can think of. If you want to really get into studying different types of leaves, that would be your best bet for her leaf study, her leaves and her roses and her poppies. I have all of her studies and I, I will sit and watch them. And sometimes you have to watch them three or four times because she has so much information in there. You'll miss something. And I've had people mention, well, I don't remember seeing Donna do this and she's done just about everything we could think of on different types of painting and it's in there you just you just have to go back and look for it it's all included in your one stroke I'm not teaching you too much anything that hasn't already been taught I'm just showing you what what I do to incorporate it into paintings that I do. Alright, so you want to come over into this direction. Now if I just want little areas, let's go into some greenscape. There's a little bit of water. see it. Again, I can flip-flop this brush around just like I did before in the foliage and get a little deeper color. That way it brings that foliage forward a little more. Just a little more depth. See, I still have those light shadow colors. Leave those in there. You want those. And then I come back and I deepen them. Okay, and then once I get all of this deepened as much as I want to, and I'm just using water right now. Oops. Sorry, I'm not on my big canvas, but I painted it all. I have nowhere to nowhere to paint, so I had to had to go back onto this small one. 
after I videotaped it for 30 minutes. <laughs> um, you have to laugh at yourself because if you didn't, it probably drive you nuts, though, trying to figure out all this. So I just, I just, you know, cope with it and go with it. A lesson learned. Cut your brush, pull out like you were doing a, a tulip leaf or something. And then come right back in. Right back in. Some deeper color on the sides. I love that pulling stroke. One of my favorite ones to do. As you can tell, I really like this overstroke. It's a different stroke because you're not you're not going like this. You can do the um, oh, what do I want to say the pedal stroke, but once you get that laid on, then come back with the overstroke. That's the only thing that I'm doing different. Coming back over it, I'm using it to lay in my color. Now, picking up a little bit of that deoxine purple. Let's see, where am I on camera here? And I can deepen this right along here. Walk that color up. See how much richer that color looks now? I love using the deoxide. I know I'm saying that wrong. I don't understand why they have all these names that you can't pronounce. Okay, let me turn my palette here. There we go. Be still on camera. I'm going to deepen this right up here. color out a little bit. Now, if I want to deepen just an edge of that, or half of a leaf, I can do that too. Sometimes you might, you might want to do that. If you're putting in leaves where you have the light side and the dark side. I think, I think Miss Priscilla does that on a lot of her, her paintings. Gosh, I remember Priscilla back in the back in the seventies. She was our queen of toe painting. Everybody painted in oils back then. I started out in oils because they didn't have bottle acrylic. Never even heard of bottle acrylic. And she she painted for whom the brush tolls, oh my goodness, we loved her books. I taught several of, out of several of her books when I taught toll painting. Incredible lady. She has really helped a lot of painters. Didn't get a chance to Take from her, take from her, because she has a lot of valuable information that will help you. Okay, let's deepen this a little bit. This is what you're going to do on your painting. Let's deepen those edges. My dog's barking. I don't know if you can hear her. The mailman's here. She waits all day for that mailman. Okay, now we'll go ahead and add a few more leaves down on the bottom there. Oops. This is going to make so much noise. It's going to pick all that up. Am I on camera here? Yes. Touch and pull in. Try to 
try to make the base of it down here wider than the top part. One more. Let's do a little short leaf right here. I'm kind of off camera. Let's turn this a little bit more. I don't have much space here. I am, uh, I don't even think you can see that. So I would have to move this around so much, but I've got this iPad right above me. I wish I could find a good overhead holder for my iPad. I do, but then you have to have a clamp to clamp it. I don't know what everybody else uses. I wish somebody would let me know if they could get one. I think they use a, a swing arm or something that they swing it and you can overhead it. I need one of those, but I don't know what it's called. I don't know where they got it. So. Here's the bottom of that leaf. Kind of lost this one too. Let's get this one back and then we'll move to something else here. Can do some purple. And I'll show you what I did on the big painting here. Pull it under. There's that one. You can see we've added our dark leaves. Now let me pull in my other painting here that I did. Hold on. Now it's hard to get on here because it's bigger, but I'll move my iPad around and maybe you can see it. This turned out a little deeper in tone. It's still nice. I, I like the colors very much. It's a little bit deeper in color than, than the original that I had posted. But every time you do a painting, it's going to be different depending on uh, what you pick up. I did that other painting a little while ago, so I could have picked up the wrong colors that I used for it, so it came out a little different, but put in all your leaves, and I will show you how to paint around some of these edges. I think I covered that in the roses for that, and then I covered how to do the center, so I think we're pretty much finished with this as far as showing you everything that that you need to see. So I want to thank you for joining me for this painting. And I'll be doing a lot more paintings as we go along. I think I'd like to do some English gardens where we do a little landscaping and potted plants. So I'll pretty much stay with uh, the florals. That's what I like to do. And if you enjoy these videos, make sure you subscribe and push the like button so that I'll be able to stay on YouTube, I guess. I'm not for sure how this YouTube works, but anyway, Thank you so much, and until the next painting, I will see you then.